Hi, I'm Sue Merrick, and today I'm here with Colin Howlett, the CTO of Vesema. Hi, Colin. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Sue. Glad to be here. Great. So, Colin, let's start. What's causing the demand for more high-speed data? The increase in high-speed data offerings is driven by many factors, those we know and understand, such as increasingly better and larger content, better video with higher resolutions, and improved gaming content. And those we know about and generally accept, things like Nielsen Law, which shows growth of 50% or maybe slightly less these days in offered broadband speeds, although this is obviously slowing in the gigabit era. And those we believe are coming but aren't here yet, things like augmented reality or the so-called metaverse. Great, and where do you see this going in like five years and how will technology support that growth? Yeah, I think the result of all of this growth is a constant increase in offerings from broadband service providers year over year. So right now, um, and as we look over the next five years, we're entering a critical decision point for how our customers, cable operators in this case, provide their services to their customers. We're crossing one gigabit per second services in the downstream and shifting up to and beyond one gigabit per second in the upstream, what we like to call the multi-gigabit era. Along with this shift, each operator will need to decide what is best for their specific scenario whether that's leveraging their existing hybrid fiber coax plants by moving from DOCSIS 3.1 to DOCSIS 4.0, or moving all the way to fiber to the home with technologies such as 10 gig EPON or XGS PON. While we talk about bandwidth as a key metric, we're increasingly seeing end users and customers care about other aspects of broadband services. So over the next five years, we'll see latency as a really critical part of what the broadband providers are offering. Latency does matter, especially for things like gaming, where we're actually seeing score improvements in online competitive games because of the ping times. And end-to-end -end latency is also important in interactive applications. For example, the Zoom, where lower delay makes conversations more intimate and lifelike. So how do operators prepare for, or prepare their broadband networks for this, um, this growth in data? Well, we see a number of trends in next generation architectures, whether that's for broadband, or delivery of IP video is one of those services. When talking about the edge of the network, the last miles between the customer and a, and a real, real estate facility, we like to think of these architectures as having two guiding principles. Number one, centralize what you can. In particular, focus on those aspects that are insensitive to latency and make better use of public and, public, public and private cloud environments in the data center. This includes control and management with, some, with cloud native architectures, which enable massive scalability and flexible deployments. The second principle is to distribute what you must, push Ethernet out deep into the network and enable that final hop into customer devices, whether that is RF, coax or wireless, or PON with fiber direct into the home. Distributing the data plane processing and specialized silicon is best for efficiency and scale, where every picojoule and every cent per bit delivered actually matters to the operator bottom line. Add and compute at the edge in places where critical latency, energy bandwidth or cost can be saved. And in distributed access, what this really means is distributing the data plane, placing a remote ACFI or remote FI device for DOCSIS in the node at the last mile, or shifting the OLT in a pawn network to the far edge in a cabinet or even in the node. And wireless, of course, by necessity, has to be located close to the customer for coverage. And all of these distributed access scenarios support integration of edge compute at that same location in the future where those critical latency applications will reside. On the other hand, that also means we should be centralizing control, monitoring and management plane through solutions such as enter cloud controllers or our enter access controller. These solutions are insensitive to latency and outages and as a result are well suited to data center deployments. Of course, in these HFC environments, we really are shifting the process into the edge. This means taking the HFC networks of yesterday where the Mac and Fi are located in racks of equipment in the hub with finicky RF over fiber and moving all of that into the field with ethernet. And really this helps, this movement of digital fiber really helps to distribute to that edge. It gives the fiber connectivity that you need for the edge processing in the future. And standardization of that through things like flexible Mac architecture allows us to move it in a standardized way. Of course, we're going to be moving to DOCSIS 4.0. Yeah, can we talk a little bit more about the path to 10G and the expectations for DOCSIS 4.0, which you just mentioned? Yeah, so really with, with DOCSIS 4.0 in mind, it's a, it's a good time to think about why do we need this in the path to 10G and the transition away from the state of the art. Of course, today that means high split DOCSIS 3.0.1, which is just getting deployed. From a pure capacity perspective, DOCSIS 4.0 is here to support multi-gigabit upstream services, that multi-gigabit era, to keep up with fiber competition who can already offer that service. Um, at a 
of course, from an op operator perspective, as a cable operator, that allows you to leverage the existing equipment on the ground. We believe that's a, a four to 10 times reduction in overall cost of deployment. Um, in addition, there's also a thing that we're calling DOCSIS 3.1+, um, which is about cable modems supporting DOCSIS 4.0, but actually running them in the lower frequency bands. This allows the system to support more capacity overall uh, or speed from an individual cable modem. And in the downstream, we've demonstrated close to or beyond 10 gigabits per second, and in the upstream, up to 6.2 gigabits per second. And you just can't achieve that in the DOCSIS 3.1 modems of today. And this last vision really draw, will help to drive the need for those multi-gigabit upstream rates as fiber competition and as user demand requires it. Of course, DOCSIS 4.0 FDD, which is what we're talking about here, the 1.8 gigahertz variant, also offers compatibility with both legacy operations tools and the operation and existing cable files. You know, in those cases, we have multiple amplifiers in the network. We don't have to change those amplifier locations, and we can keep that in the same for the majority of the network. And of course, we know that having DOCSIS 4.0 with the existing network allows the operators to move much faster than the time it would take to build fiber all the way to the home. Now, for IP video, how can that video delivery closer to the edge benefit operators? And also, how can that benefit subscribers? I think in the IP video delivery world, moving delivery closer to the edge is addressing two primary aspects, improving customer experience by being more responsive through serving requests from a local cache instead of 1D for in the network. And that allows you to avoid delays or network or server congestion further back in the delivery system. And of course, reducing costs per bit delivered by not serving the same content over and over again, except in that portion of the network where it's actually not common, uh, helps us. And we do that by putting it as close to the edge as possible. In this case, our edge solutions help subscriber satisfaction operator costs by one, uh, using our open CDN edge, which can act as a CDN for over the top operators within the cable network. So not just your own IP video that you're delivering as a, as a service, but other over the top providers. And of course, we also have our micro cache and community cache systems, which are built for operators that have very minimal infrastructure, uncooled cabinets, or putting it even outside in a node, which can serve, and these solutions can serve multi-dwelling apartments. Uh, they can also serve gated communities where you have the right number of subscribers to justify a cache deep in the network. So how does cloud complement the move to the edge? Cloud complements the move to the edge by thinking back to those two guiding principles we use. One, distribute what you must, that's the edge, and you centralize what you can. And that's exactly the place where cloud fits, whether that's public, private cloud, or a hybrid where you can burst your higher capacity systems or move some of your systems into the public hyperscale providers. So deployment of cloud native technologies, such as containerization with Kubernetes, along with the automation and orchestration possible there, allows us to shift that same architecture into different deployment scenarios. We can deploy that in that ruggedized cache way down at the far edge of the network, or we can deploy that all the way up into the public cloud and it can be wherever it happens to be across the globe. Really that allows us to do things like burst caching, for high demand live events where we can use the local cache. Once we start to exceed the capacity there, we'll serve it from the public cloud. We have operators already doing that today for things like football matches in Europe. Um, and public and pri private cloud deployments also allow centralization of components that meet service provider needs for one, improving the resiliency, allow auto scaling and orchestration in the really high scale environments for larger operators. Uh, that burst scaling we talked about, flexible deployment, moving public, private as needed, dealing with facility shifts, dealing with everything you need, you need to do, you can move freely move your workloads from public to, to private cloud, or speed up the delivery and deployment. You don't have infrastructure yet, but, but uh, Amazon and Azure do, so Google go deploy it there for now. And of course, lowering the operating costs. Everything you do to enable that kind of flexibility is really about moving your organization to support greater levels of orchestration and automation. And all of that will help you to lower your operating costs overall. Well, thank you, Colin, for joining me today for this discussion. Yeah, thank you so much, Sue. Just in closing, we'd like to say that we believe the edge of the network is an enormous opportunity to optimize customer experience while also improving service provider costs. This enables the multi-gigabit era of the future. We don't know exactly what will take advantage of those greater speeds and improved latencies, but we know that building them will foster the next generation of applications. Thanks.